Hi and welcome students. If you're watching this video, you're probably wanting to learn more about Microsoft PowerPoint 2019. In this playlist, I'm going to be covering how to prepare for your Microsoft PowerPoint 2019 Microsoft Office Specialist exam, as well as some different things that you'll need to know in both your career and personal life when it comes to using PowerPoint presentations. Let's get started. So as I mentioned, this video is the first in the playlist. So first, we need to figure out how to open up PowerPoint. And to open up PowerPoint, you're going to need to use the Start menu to search to make sure that you have this program on your device. And one way to do that is by taking your mouse and going down to the bottom left where your, search, where your Start menu is, clicking on that and searching through PowerPoint along the available apps. I find this to be a pretty slow method, so I don't typically like to do this. I'm going to be going over a variety of keyboard shortcuts throughout this playlist, and we're about to learn our first one. To open up the start menu I very rarely go down here and click on this because you're taking time to move your hands from your keyboard to your start menu back to the keyboard again and so what we're going to do is just use the keyboard and so look at the bottom left of your keyboard and you should see a Windows icon similar to the one uh, you see in the start menu down here and if you have that button it'll be typically to the bottom left of your keyboard to the left of the space bar and left of all and it'll, it'll just have the Windows logo. When you press that, it'll open up the Start menu. Your keyboard more, might say Start or something along those lines as well. Keyboards are different, so yours may or may not have this button. But when you press that button, it does the exact same thing. It just opens up the Start menu. And so now, rather than searching through the list of available programs, let's just go ahead and immediately start to type PowerPoint. I type in PowerPoint and I see that the app shows up right here. Very good. All right, so this app is right here. Now I don't want to go through the process of hitting the start button and typing in PowerPoint every single time I use this program. You may have noticed at the bottom of our screen, I have a list of applications available. These applications are different applications that I use all the time. And so this area is called my taskbar. I could actually pin PowerPoint to this taskbar. Since I'm going to be uh, covering PowerPoint a lot throughout this playlist, obviously I want this to be in my taskbar. So I'm going to right click on PowerPoint right here and go pin to taskbar. When I do that, you'll notice the PowerPoint logo appears down here. And so that's going to be helpful, and I'll show you why in just a moment. I'm going to click away from the Start menu now, and then I'll see down here, there's my PowerPoint icon. Now before we click on it, I want to show you how to arrange it. I typically like to keep the PowerPoint icon with the rest of my Microsoft Office apps, and I like to keep it just to the right of Access and just before Outlook. So I'm going to click and drag PowerPoint and just drag it to the left right here. That's where I like to keep my PowerPoint. You could keep yours wherever you'd like. Whatever makes most sense for you on your device is fine. And so I put my PowerPoint logo right there. And now I'm going to launch the application simply by clicking on it. There we go. And that's going to launch PowerPoint 2019. Awesome. So now that this is launched, we'll notice on the left side here that we have our recent documents, or rather presentations, because a document in PowerPoint is called a presentation. And so you'll see that my recent presentation is a thumbnail generator that I use. And then down here, we also see that I could open up other presentations. Yours will look different than mine over here because we're using different files, but you still should see at the bottom, open other presentations, where you can search for other presentations that are on your computer. Now let's say that we're starting out a new presentation and we want to use a theme. Well, you'll see that there's a list of different themes over here on the right side. Some of these themes are used a lot, so you may say, hey, you know what, I don't want my presentation to look like everyone else's, and you may decide to search for your own themes up here. You have education, charts, diagrams, business, infographics, things like that that you could search for under suggested, or if you want something more specific, you could even go up here to search and search for something uh, very specific to your needs. But what we're going to do today is we're just going to open up a blank presentation. When we open this up, this is essentially no theme. All that we have is our uh, default fonts, effects, and colors. So there we go. This opens up a blank presentation. And on this presentation in the very top left, you're going to notice the quick access toolbar. This has things like save, undo, redo, and start the slideshow from the beginning. You could customize this by using customize quick access toolbar to add different commands to this area. I'm not going to do that here because I like to keep my um, 
PowerPoint looking standard or default because I want it to be the same as most people watching these YouTube videos. So I'll leave mine alone, but you could always customize yours up here. In the top middle, you're going to notice it says presentation one. This is the default name for a new presentation within PowerPoint, and we haven't saved it, so we haven't chosen a new name for it, but we'll learn that throughout this playlist. As we move on, you'll see your name or the computer device that you're using up in the top right, as well as an option to collapse or expand the ribbon. We're gonna learn this later in the playlist as well, so for right now, leave that option alone. Now we see minimize, maximize, and close. If you minimize, it'll minimize the window, which will hide it down below. If you restore down, if you're already maximized, it'll restore it down to where it doesn't take up the whole window. And then if you click maximize, it will take up the whole window. I recommend using PowerPoint in maximized mode if possible. That way you have as much room as you need to uh, edit your presentations. Then you'll also see close. All right, so now this is where the ribbon starts, which is right below the quick access toolbar. And that starts with what is called tabs. And your default tab is the home tab. You could tell that this tab is active because it has a white background rather than the default orange background that the rest of the tabs have. Your first tab is file, which takes you to the backstage menu. And this one covers things like saving the document, printing the document, and opening up new documents or presentations rather. Uh, then you go to Home, Insert, Design, Transitions, Animations, and so on. You'll notice that yours probably looks very similar to mine, if not exactly the same. But we may have some differences depending on the version of Microsoft PowerPoint that you're using, as well as different add-ins that your application may have or may not have. All right, next up. We're going to go ahead and look at all of the commands. If I go back to the Home tab to make that my active tab, you're going to see a list of different commands here. Some are available to click on, and some are grayed out, meaning they're unavailable to click on. Depending on the different um, areas that you click on within your presentation, some of these things may be active or inactive. As you move on, you'll eventually get all the way over here, and you'll see Replace. And you may think, well, as I'm watching these tutorials, let's say I'm teaching you about replace, I'm never going to tell you go to the home tab and click replace because you'll have to look through all of these individual commands until eventually you get to replace. By that time, I'll probably be on a completely different topic or uh, further ahead than you would like. And so I'll never navigate you through that way. And navigating these programs is very important, especially on these YouTube videos, because I wanna make sure that you're able to keep up. And so I will always use what is called a group to further navigate us. And so down here, you'll see that these non-clickable text words are here. Clipboard, slides, font, paragraph, drawing, editing, Adobe Acrobat. So you'll see that these, you can't click these and they don't seem to do much. But what these are, these are basically categories of related commands. And so everything related to the font is gonna be within the font group. So you would see home tab, font group. These are all related to things when I am typing. And you can see each group has a vertical line to the left and a vertical line to the right, which shows you when the group starts and when the group ends. So going back to the earlier example, what happens if I want you to click on replace? Well, I'm always going to navigate you with the following language. Home tab, editing group, replace. Okay, so that's how I would do that. Home tab, editing group, replace. That'll make it so that you don't have to read all these individual commands. Instead, you go to the home tab, you look for the editing group down at the bottom, and then you could easily see replaces above that. All right. So that is called the ribbon, and we'll be using and navigating throughout the ribbon throughout this playlist. Along the left side below the ribbon, you're going to notice this kind of rectangular uh, white rectangle with an orange border around it. This is our slide thumbnail pane, and we only have one slide right now on our presentation. Eventually, we're going to add in more of these, and you'll you'll see them listed all along this slide thumbnail pane. This slide thumbnail pane is used for navigation, so it allows us to move to other slides, and our active slide always has the orange border around it. Since this is our only slide on this presentation, that's the only one with the border, and the only one that we'll see over here. As we move to the right, you'll notice that this is our actual slide area, 
Okay, and within our slide area, we're going to see that we can add words, like right here. Click to add a title. If I just start typing, you'll see there's my words over here, and they appear over here on the slide thumbnail, which is basically a preview of the whole slide. Keep in mind that only things that appear within the white slide appear on the slide thumbnail or would appear on a presentation. So if I moved half of this off, if I just drag this and moved half of it off like that, you'll see that only that little part appears on the actual presentation, which is right over here. All right, so that is uh, the, the main slide area. Down here at the bottom, you'll see the status bar and it says slide one of one. Obviously these numbers will increase as we create um, more slides and navigate to them. You'll also see that you could check for spelling down here in the bottom left. And then as we move to the right, you'll also see that you could add notes to a slide or comments on specific parts of the slide. Moving on, you'll see that you could check out different views for how to view your slideshows. And then finally, zoom options to zoom in on a slide or zoom out on a slide. However, I never use these because I simply click within the slide area and then hold down control on my keyboard and scroll up to zoom in or scroll down to zoom out. So hold control, zoom in by going up on your scroll wheel, on your mouse, and then scrolling down and holding control to zoom out. So the, that's another keyboard shortcut for you. So today we went over how to open the program, how to apply the program to the taskbar, and finally the different navigation tools within Microsoft PowerPoint 2019. If you found this video helpful, uh, please give uh, it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you have any questions or comments, please put them down in the comment box below and I will do my best to help you. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I hope you'll continue with the rest of the playlist. Have a great day.